Hi, my name is Bowden Kelly. I'm a program manager working on the JavaScript editing experience in Visual Studio. And today I'm really excited to walk you through some of the new experiences you can expect to find in VS 2017. Specifically, we will briefly discuss what's new. I'll then dive into a demo so you can see firsthand some of these new capabilities. And finally, as this is a short format video, I'll point you to some more resources where you can learn more. So what's new? Over the last year, we've been working very hard to replace the entire JavaScript language service. This is the part of VS that powers IntelliSense, formatting, and other parts of the editing experience. The new language service is a static analysis engine powered by TypeScript, which will provide more flexibility and capabilities moving forward. First and foremost, you can expect richer IntelliSense. By using TypeScript to drive our IntelliSense, we can now service additional information like optional parameters and type information that allows you to better understand the code you're writing. VS 2017 will also support ES6 and JSX syntax. Recently, the JavaScript language has been evolving to include new syntax sets that allow developers to be more expressive with their code. It's worth noting that these syntax sets are strictly opt-in, but you may use them if you choose to. Along the same lines, we now fully support CommonJS and ESX modules. Modules allow you to break up your code base into logical pieces, and because VS understands these modules, you will continue to get great IntelliSense even after you do so. Finally, the new language service can transpile your code from ES6 and later syntax to ES5. As well, it can use JS doc tags to improve IntelliSense results on the fly. Now that you have a brief overview of what to expect in VS 2017, Let's dive into a demo and see some of these things in action. All right, so here we have an ASP.NET web application. Uh, and this is created from a template in Visual Studio. And if you've done this before, you probably recognize the files that I have over here on my right. We're looking at JavaScript today, so we're going to jump into the scripts folder. And notice that we have multiple libraries already loaded. You can see we have Bootstrap, jQuery, and Knockout, as well as some others. Uh, but we're going to look into our own code and jump into homeviewmodel.js. In here, you'll notice we have some basic JavaScript code. We have an AJAX query. Uh, but I want to show you that out of the box, Visual Studio knows that we're using these libraries. And so we get IntelliSense for AJAX, uh, as well as all of the other members on jQuery. And what's really cool is uh, previously, we could only tell you that these were here, and now we can give you great information on the details of AJAX and its function parameters. And so if we look at AJAX, we can see that, in fact, it takes one parameter, which is this settings object. And previously, you'd have to go look at jQuery's website and look up the documentation to understand exactly what's involved here. But now with the new language service, you can do go to definition by hitting F12 on AJAX, and this will take you to a file that we use to power the IntelliSense experience. If you notice up here, you'll see a .dts extension on this file. This is a TypeScript declaration file that has been generated by the community to explain what jQuery is expecting. And so you'll notice here this object that we were expecting, jQuery AJAX settings, I can go to definition on that as well to see exactly all of the properties that can be taken by an object literal passed into this function. And that's pretty cool. This saves a lot of time when using a library that you're not familiar with because it allows you to jump around and understand new methods without having to reference documentation. So let's say I wanted to replace this AJAX call with a git call because really this is just an HTTP git request. So in fact, I can use the .git function. And so immediately when I invoke this, I get IntelliSense that prompts me uh, that I need a string here for the URL. And so I can say app.datamodel.userInfoURL. And then it's telling me I need a, a success callback function, um, which I have down here. And so I know I need to pass in a function, but it also tells me the parameters that will be returned in that function. I'll get data, text status, and a jqxhr. And this is very helpful because typically you have to look these things up explicitly. Um, and finally, they point out that there is in fact a third parameter called data type which in fact we do need uh, to set to application.json. But we're not actually going to go through and replace this whole thing. I just wanted to show that if you were, you don't really need to be familiar with the git function because IntelliSense will provide you all of the information you need on the fly. So now let's go look at another example of where the new language service helps us out. I'm going to use the file open folder dialog 
uh, to go pick a new folder that doesn't have a VS project. And this is going to be a simple React project that I found on the internet that I can load into Visual Studio and start editing right away. And so I'm going to open the app main app file, and immediately you'll notice a class. And for some of you, this may seem out of place for JavaScript. Uh, historically, JavaScript classes have worked by declaring functions and using prototype chaining. But as I mentioned, there's new syntax coming to JavaScript. And in ECMAScript 6, or ECMAScript 2015, they've now released classes as a part of the JavaScript language. What this allows us to do is to use classes in a manner very similar to you know, Java or C Sharp. Uh, and they operate exactly as you'd expect. And so here I have a class product data with a constructor that creates some properties. And I can now create this using the new keyword, uh, just as you'd expect. And using a new feature in our IntelliSense window, I can actually filter my results to just classes to focus on product data, which is exactly what I want. Then I can see the constructor requirements for creating a product data object. And this is pretty cool, but you'll notice that this IntelliSense is way less rich than the IntelliSense we used when we saw jQuery. What you can do to augment this experience is you can add a JS dot comment. And by typing slash star star, we will template out an entire JS doc that you can add some sort of JS doc comment to. And then you'll notice that when you look at back at your IntelliSense, that comment you add is now included. But that's not all you can do. There's actually a lot of power you can do to improve your IntelliSense using JS doc. You can also include types. So if you know that names are always and must be strings, you can choose string as the type of name. Um, and we can actually give you IntelliSense in these JS doc comments as well. And so now when we go back and look at IntelliSense again, you'll see that this name is now listed as a string. So any consumer of your code will now have that extra help, that richer IntelliSense to help them get stuff done fast. I also want to point out um, at the top of this class, you saw some import statements. And these import statements are also part of ECMAScript 2015 or ES6. And basically, these are what lets you break your project into modules. And so here you can see we're importing product from the product module. And we could go to definition on this, but I also want to show you a, the new navigate to functionality. By hitting control comma, you pop up the navigate to window and I can now type in product to get a list of not only um, files, but also classes and other properties that match what I searched for. I can also do filtering on this just like IntelliSense, um, but I'm going to go ahead and choose product and jump to the file where this module is exported. In this file, you can see that we have some other interesting syntax. This is what looks like HTML, but in fact, it is JSX syntax. And if you noticed my files in this React project, you can see they are all with a .JSX extension instead of .js. And this is basically a new syntax that's favored by some libraries uh, like React that allow you to put HTML directly inside of a JavaScript file. And you'll notice I still get syntax highlighting on this HTML. I can also get IntelliSense on the JavaScript that I inject in here. And I can also go to definition on these elements, and it will take me to the location in which I define these JavaScript parts. And so this is really handy for working in large projects in which you have a lot of components, but you want to keep the components together in terms of view and function. Again, you'll notice that React makes use of ES6 classes. And so to build this React component, they actually create a class that extends React from which they've also imported using ES6. All of this is now available to you in Visual Studio 2017, and all of it comes together with the new language service to keep you productive. What you just saw is a brand new language service that puts vastly more information at your fingertips to help focus on getting things done fast. You also saw some of the newly supported syntax sets in VS, such as ES6 and JSX, and how they seamlessly integrate with your existing JavaScript environment. Finally, we looked at some of the improved editor features such as IntelliSense filtering and revamped Navigate 2, which will help make you more productive than ever. Thanks for watching this quick introduction, but I encourage you to go grab a copy of VS 2017 and try it all out yourself.